I want to give you a full guide about S corporation taxes. Okay. And uh, so uh, at the end to this conversation, you'll hear, you'll understand everything you need to understand about S corporation taxes. So here's the overview I want you to pay attention to. So the thing here is that um, when we talk about S corporation, those are businesses that use articles of incorporation to incorporate within their states or in multiple states. And what happens here is that S corporations uh, use IRS form 1120S. So what happens here is that you have a, a pass through tax model. So profits and losses are passed through to the shareholders, personal tax returns. So when they when they file their uh, form 1040, that's when they report the income and loss the items that they actually uh, transfer transferred from the Schedule K1. So when we talk about U.S. corporation, when we talk about U.S. S corporation and income taxes, you need to understand that in the U.S. right now, you have two basic types of corporations. You have C corporations and you have S corporations. So C corps are typically just called corporations. S corporations are named for the section of the Internal Revenue Code that applies to this business type. So both have the same basic structure. I mean, give or take. And uh, so when we talk about uh, S corporation, you need to understand that you have uh, the the same sort of process when it comes to depreciation uh, expense deductions. You have uh, the ability to use cash accounting in certain cases. You have lower interest rates deduction for larger uh, businesses and larger uh, S corporations. You have limited meal expense deductions. And you, have, uh, you, you also have the entertainment expenses that were eliminated as part of the TCJA. So the TCJA actually applies to all types of corporations, including S corporations and C corporations. Now, when we talk about S corporations in terms of uh, the tax return due dates, the, the return due date is basically um, March 15th. Okay. The return due dates for C corporations returns is actually uh, April 15th. But for S corporation, we have uh, March 15th. The only thing you need to really remember here is that uh, you can always uh, ask for a six month a extension if you have problems, if you if you want to really sort out your 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 S corporation affairs. This is totally possible. The IRS will understand it. Not a problem. So and they will actually accommodate you. You just need to file form 7004 to actually ask for that uh, extension request. OK, by the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. So as we talk about S corporations, remember that uh, there are some forms that are really important. So let's go through those forms so we have a clear idea of what we're talking about. So basically, uh, corporations file their taxes on form 1120. Okay, that's for corporations. Now, when we so anytime I say I use the word corporations, I mean C corporations. So C corporations file their taxes on form 1120. What about S corporations? S corporations file their federal income taxes using form 1120S. Okay, so C corporation 1120, S corporation 1120S. And this is really important. And uh, S corporation shareholders report their share of corporate income or loss on a schedule K1. So those are critical uh, forms that you need to be aware of. So, so we have a C corporation 1120. S corporation 1120s and uh, you have a schedule K1 so you have schedule K1 for uh, for uh, S corporation but you also have schedule K1 for from 1065 for partnerships okay so you can file your corporate uh, or S corporation tax returns by mail or you can have your tax preparer e file it for you not a problem certain corporations with uh, assets of 10 million dollars or more that file at least 250 to 250 returns per year must e file and you can find the correct addresses to use when filing your uh, form 1120 or 1120s on the irs website and so when we talk about uh, s corporation taxes in other words when you file 1120s remember that you have also some uh, estimated taxes you have amended tax returns and you have extension applications so as an S corporation, you must pay estimated taxes if your expected tax bill is $500 or more. So you need to calculate and file estimated taxes on the IRS Form 1120W. And the installments are generally due by the 15th day of the 4th, 6th, 9th, and 12th months of the year. So this would be uh, April 15th, June 15th, and December 15th for a corporation that uses the, the calendar year. 
And uh, as an S corporation, you can always uh, apply for an extension. I think I just said that, that earlier. So you need to file form 7004. This is how you actually apply for the extension to have uh, more, more time. Okay. And uh, a corporation must use form 1120X if it needs to amend a previous year's tax return. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about S corporation taxes. This is a full guide about S corporation taxes. One thing I want to say here is that uh, it's important to uh, seek help with S corporation income taxes if you if you have uh, you know like uh, if you're having problems because S corporation taxes can be complicated. So it's it's usually best to get help from a CPA or tax professional who is familiar with corporate taxes instead of uh, attempting to prepare this return on your own. So review uh, basic information about business taxes that you should know before you enlist the help of a CPA enrolled agent or uh, even a, a tax professional, I mean, uh, a tax lawyer rather, or any other qualified tax preparer to prepare your corporate, your corporation taxes for you. Okay. So when we talk about that, when we talk about S corporation taxes, it's important to really have the right level of expertise on board so that uh, you can actually avoid, uh, I would say surprises later on. Okay. Now remember that when we talk about S corporation, this is a federal construct. What does that mean? It means that S corporations are not formed at the state level because corporations, that is C corporations, are formed at the state level. And the process involves drafting articles of incorporation and corporate bylaws, electing uh, a board of directors, and adhering to the state's registration requirements. So what happens here is that uh, you do not file a C corporation uh, C corporations at the, um, at the federal level. It, it is a state construct. Now, an S corporation is created first as a C corporation then it files to elect S corporation status with the IRS. By the way, you can also have an LLC that actually uh, elects to be taxed as an S corporation, not a problem. Now, S corporation do pay taxes at the state level. Please, you want to you want to acquire with uh, the authorities in, in your in your area to have more uh, more more information because uh, depending on whether you live in Jersey or, or New York or Georgia or Alabama or Tennessee or whatever or like in California you might have different uh, S corporation tax uh, tax requirements okay and so they so you have to uh, reach out to tax authorities in some cases you might even have to pay uh, S corporation taxes at the uh, at the city level so at the state level but also at the city level and in some cases at the county level let's talk about the steps you need to follow for filing s corporation taxes okay now how do s corporation taxes really work well it really depends on uh, the fact that you are going to first get to file form 2553 to elect s corporation taxation don't let the word corporation confuse you because s corporations don't pay corporate income tax instead they actually enjoy pass-through taxation in which the company's owners pay taxes on their portion of the company's earnings based or on their individual tax rates right everything happens through schedule k1 i think i showed you when we started this this conversation i showed you schedule k1 what what it looks like and uh, how to actually uh, fill it and uh, so there are basically uh, three benefits, three fiscal benefits of filing as an S corporation. So you have no double taxation, something that you have uh, a lot when you uh, when you have a C corporation, you have double taxation because you're paying taxes at the company level, but you're also paying taxes when uh, the company distributes the dividends to you. And uh, for an S corporation, what we love about the, the taxes here is that you have the shareholder employee status. So you are able to uh, classify as employee of your organization. So unlike other pass-through entity types, S corporation shareholders who actively participate in management can also be considered employees. So this is kind of cool. And so you do not have to pay self-employment taxes. And then you have limited liability. Okay. And so S corporations have two identities. They are S corporations for S for tax purposes, but they started as either C corporations or LLCs, two structures that afford limited liability to owners. So unless you personally guarantee a business debt, your personal liability generally does not extend past your investment in the company. Of course, there are cases where a business transaction pierces the corporate veil, opening opening you up to more liability. But this kind of rare. It depends on how you how you play the game anyway. 
So overall, when you think about S corporation taxes, you need to understand that everything happens uh, through a Form 1120S, but also you also you also have to enjoy shareholder employee status. But please make sure that you have you set yourself up for a reasonable salary. So this is important. The words reasonable, the words a reasonable salary are kind of important to the IRS. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about S corporation taxes. This is a full guide on that topic. So let's talk about the approach you need to follow here if you have to file taxes as an S corporation, right? So, so the first thing you have to do here is to, to prepare your financial statements. So normally when we talk about financial statements, we're speaking about all the four primary financial statements. So we're speaking about a statement of a cash flow, a statement of uh, owner's equity, a statement of uh, income, it also called P&L, profit and loss statements, and a balance sheet. A balance sheet it's also, is uh, sometimes called a statement of uh, of a personal, I mean, statement of a financial condition or statement of financial position. Okay, so when you have a balance sheet, you have to show your assets, liability, uh, liabilities, and owner's equity. For a profit and loss statement, you have to show uh, your revenue and your expenses. For a statement of cash flows, you have you have a you have a cash flow from operating activities, cash flows from uh, investing activities, and cash flow from uh, financing activities. So those are really important. So so that that's number one. Number two, you have to issue forms W two. So before you actually do anything, before you do anything, before you file your business tax returns, you have to complete an issue, Forms W-2, for all the employees. This is, this is a mandatory uh, rule, though. So if you don't have that, the IRS will come after you and you don't you do want to have, you don't want to be on the wrong end of the IRS uh, IR, okay? So you want to actually uh, complete an issue, Forms W-2, for all the employees. And for, Form W-2 actually uh, reports employee compensation and how much you, the employer, withheld in FICA taxes during the year. So with cover sheet from uh, with cover sheet form W3, the forms get sent to each employee, the Social Security Administration, and state and local governments. So so uh, shareholders who uh, S corporation shareholders who participate in management will receive a form W2 because their compensation package must include a salary, okay? And box one of form W2 should include any health insurance premiums that S corporation is paid on behalf of a, of a shareholder and the W-2 compensation, even for shareholder employees, is the business deductions. So this is kind of cool. And then the thing you have to do here is, is to prepare uh, information return form 1120S. It is an information return. In other words, you're not paying taxes while filing form 1120S. You're just reporting. It's, it's, it's more like a FYI. You're telling the IRS, listen, this is what happens uh, this year when it comes to my S corporations, profits, losses, deductions, and so on and so forth. The next thing you need to do here is to distribute Schedules K-1. And, and this is kind of important because, uh, you know, your the, the shareholders need to have data from Schedule K-1 to prepare their own uh, Form 1040 Schedule C, okay? So if, if they don't have the data uh, beforehand, you see, there is a responsibility from you as a as corporation shareholder or the manager uh, of the company to actually send out the, this form to all the, uh, all the shareholders. And this has to be sent out before March 15th. So the deadline is March 15th. So they have to have this before filing their, their own taxes all the way to uh, April 15th. So that there is always this sort of uh, March 15th and uh, April 15th that gives uh, the shareholders, give or take, one month to actually file their own taxes, okay? And what I want to say here is that S corporations must fill out Schedule K and Schedule K-1. Yes, they are different. You start with Schedule K, which is a built-in session of Form 1120S to summarize the S corporations' income, deductions, and credits to be passed on to shareholders. And the S Corp's total earnings get divided up on Schedule K-1. And S corporations furnish actually a Schedule K-1 to shareholders, telling them the portion of S Corp earnings for which they are responsible to pay taxes on their personal returns. So most S Corp allocate shareholder earnings by ownership interest percentage, but they can come to a different agreement depending on the functionalities within the S Corp. And then you need to file Form 1040. Not you as a company, but you need, every single shareholder needs to file a Form 1040. So as, as an S Corp shareholder, you pay income tax on two types of income. So you have uh, your salary and your portion of S Corp earnings. So you'll often hear this referred to as W-2 and K-1 income, respectively. 
So both get reported on your personal tax return. And what happens here is that your W-2 income goes on line one of Form 1040, then report your portion of S-Corp earnings on part two of Form 1040 Schedule E, a catch-all form for supplemental income, and Form 1040 Schedule K-1, a summary of Schedule E and other adjustments to income. So S Corp shareholders should not go, should not really uh, do it alone. If you are listening to me right now, you are a little confused. Let us know in the in the, in the comment section, and we'll actually hook you up with uh, a local tax practitioner, and uh, that will really kind of help you out. Just let us know your uh, city and state where you're actually where you are at, and we'll certainly get back to you. Not a problem. Let me give you a bonus here. So when we talk about S corporation and taxation, it's important to re- to really understand that uh, the the bottom line here is that is that S corporation are pass through entities. So you are not really uh, paying taxes at the company level, but you're paying taxes at the individual level. It's one of those things where the requirement is to uh, to file the. Uh, Form 1120S by March 15th. So remember that day because it really sort of uh, underlies everything. Because uh, if your shareholders do not have the data, they cannot file. Uh, if they don't have the data on Schedule K1, they are not able to file their own Form 1040, and that creates a lot of problems. So you you don't want to create some kind of domino effect here. So this is important. And one thing I, I want to say here is that you always have options. Always have options. And if the S corporation for any reason stuff happens, we all know that if the S corporation is unable to file by the deadline, it can obtain actually an extension of time actually by filing form 7004. So avail yourself of that time. If, if there are problems and you, you kind of feel like, you know what, you know, uh, you know, you could be uh, things could be delayed, whatever. You always have that option. So when you file form uh, 7004, you actually get uh, six months of uh, like the, the the deadline get extended by six months. So that's pretty good. So from March 15th, you all you go all the way to September 15th. That's just wonderful. And uh, so you also have quarterly payroll tax return deadlines. So the S corporation pays wages to employees and the company is responsible for withholding federal income tax as well as Social Security and Medicare taxes from their paychecks. That's just the law. You can't do anything about it. And so this requires the S corporation to file an IRS form 941 every quarter to uh, report the aggregate amount it withholds and needs to uh, send to the IRS. So what happens here is that uh, the IRS just have uh, just has uh, some uh, deposit schedule. So you can be a monthly a monthly de- you can be a monthly depositor or a week a biweekly depositor or a weekly depositor or even a quarterly depositor dep- depending on how much we're talking about. If we're talking about significant amounts. The IRS wants you to uh, want you to, to deposit that amount as often as possible. You also have an unemployment tax filing date. So having employees may also require the S Corporation to file an annual federal unemployment tax return each year on Form 1040. So if the corporation pays wages of $1,500 or more in any calendar quarter or, or has at least one employee working at least part of a day in 20 or more separate weeks, it typically needs to file Form 940. And the purpose of the form is to report the amount of wages the S Corporation owes unemployment tax taxes for, which the corporation is responsible for sending to the IRS. So this is what it is. So the due date for filing Form 940 is January 31st of each year. However, if the S Corporation pays the entire tax on time, the IRS allows it to file as late as February 10th. So remember those dates, they are important. So there are penalties though for filing late. So when S Corporations uh, fail to file a uh, Form 1120S by the due date or the by the extended due date, the IRS typically imposes a minimum penalty of $220 for 2023 for each month or part of the month the return is late multiplied by the number of shareholders. So if the corporation files its Form 941 after the deadline and it has an unpaid tax balance, a 5% penalty may be assessed on the balance for each month or a partial month the tax is late up to a maximum of 25%. So similar penalties apply to uh, filing Form 940 after the, the due date as well. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I spoke to you about S Corporation taxes. This was a full guide, so we went through everything. Let me do a quick recap here. So I give you an overview. I spoke to you about the forms you need to uh, actually be aware of. We spoke about the steps you need to really take and also the approach and finally the bonus. 
Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.